Hello everybody, me Nate, back with another uh, quick guide for DCS Me 21. I've just departed at Kubernetes, I'm on my way to uh, Katusi to do today's guide, which is the, the uh, use of chat flare systems and dumb bombs. Now, you just set up the RSVN for Kubernetes, or Katusi, I'm not, I'm not sure which one actually. Get these names confused, Russian names kind of similar. Ah, uh, Katusi, right. It's almost stalling, it's got more power here. Now, you know, if you have the SBO pod, which is the Jammer pod uh, with the chat flare, you'll get a. Stop warning there. You'll get a new HUD, which is up here. And the HUDs are a new uh, interface. Now, that interface um, is mostly not very useful. Um, well, at least for the purposes of this demonstration. Let's just turn on. It takes about 30 seconds to power, so let's just turn that on first. And make sure I'm on the way to, I am actually, in fact, on my way to Katusi, which I am not. So let's head back this way. Let's put the burgers on. We've got fuel to spare. Alright, there we go. We've got the, we picked it up on the RSBN. So, 50 through North Miles, give me time to brief you. Alright, now. Let's give you, if we're this now through this stock that here quickly, because it's really easy. Um, we will probably, we'll not be using any of this today. So here, are the, these are jamming stuff for um, radar stuff. So this is active or passive jamming. There's two programs for it. It doesn't actually specify the manual what the programs are. This is continuous or impulse. Now, if you looked up um, how ECM works, um, there are different ways of jamming it, which is continuous, which I believe is on one wavelength or impulse. Um, which I believe is uh, different wavelengths at, at different times. Um, someone probably can correct me. Um, I'm not very well qualified for this. I'm not sure how effective this is against a F-15, which is, is a, probably the primary opponent for the Mitchell one so far in DCS. Um, it will probably just burn through the jammers. I don't think it's particularly strong. Now, this is the one which is more useful. My automatic, I suspect that it auto is probably what it sounds like, which is it ch chucks out chaffer on automatic or manual. So we're going to have a manual. This one is the one interested today. Now currently it's on off, but you can have it on single. Sorry, correction, the first part one, where the, the uh, flicker is in the neutral position, is paired, and top is single but continuous. So let's open the cover and have a look. So there's one. One will have just passed outside. You can see it's chaff. If I have it on the middle one, paired, I think it likes me doing that. There we go. Pair. Easy. The reason I have that today is uh, for diving and bombing attacks, you really want to be chucking out chaff flares at the end of each attack so that you don't get hit by infrared weapons um, on the way out, which is uh, the biggest threat you're going to get in uh, in an aircraft doing a bombing run or a strafing run. Um, really more useful for anyone doing uh, Hardcore sims like a BMS or a DCS when there's no known threat. So when you're diving a target, you just you have no idea what's there. Better safe than sorry. Check out some flares, um, so you don't get hit by any uh, stingers or strellas on the way out. Now, um, these things have 64 total countermeasures. The default is half and half, 32 chaff, 32 flare. Uh, there is also another chaff flare system that doesn't come with a pod. The one that's non-bundled. It will be located when you add it on at the rear of the aircraft, and it will look like uh, sort of a bee beehive. Um, it's, a, it's a sort of a square box that has like beehive shaped uh, little boxes and compartments in it, and that's a chaff flare boxes. So it just it will release them out. Now that isn't launched up here. That is launched down here, right next to the throttle, which is not a particularly convenient location, I suppose. But this is the, this is the 60s design here. So let's get set up for a bombing run. So we're gonna have an air to ground mode here. I want this to be a bombardment mode. I want this to be a gun mode, I believe. I actually need to be correct. Let me check. Missiles, guns, rockets, guns. Let's have a gun mode. So we have all, all that stuff done. Ten. And the more important thing is to turn off the um, turn on the tactical drop, which will arm the bombs. Now we have on bombs panel one and two because that's where the bombs are. We have eight. Fab 100s, which are 100 kilo bombs. The rational system is very straightforward. Um, fab followed by any number is the is a dumb bomb with a specific weight. Now, when you have bombs, you need to be quite careful. This is the reason 
uh, I, I say this, I need to emphasize this, is because it's the fact that if you pull too many Gs, the bombs will in fact just rip off, and if you are really unlucky, the wings will rip off with it. This is in fact the third time I've done the video, because the first time I missed the target entirely, and the second time I ripped the, dropped the bombs off, so didn't see much there. Anyway, so let's start our target. Now the manual says you want to be about 3k up or above, because you need to dive reasonably steep, and it recommends you do it at a 30 degree angle. Engines idle, so not pick up too much speed. I'm going to try and aim for the Hercules bomb. Uh, Hercules on the right, which you can see there. There'll be two lights. This, this is a bailout height, and that is the bomb's drop height. So if the right light goes on, we pull out no matter what we're doing. If the left light comes on, the bomb is ready to launch. Yeah, that should tell me that. There you go. There goes the bombs. Bombs are away. The light didn't come on, so we're alright. Let's see what we hit. Oh, I dropped one bomb. Hit something. Not too bad. So let's try that one again. Terrible there. I didn't hit the chaff flares, so if there was an infrared missile, a stinger, or a strella, that'd be me gone. So that's after burn up. Luckily, didn't pull too many G's. Um, I think there is a G meter somewhere on board, but I haven't looked it up. I think it's. Uh, it's I can't remember which one. That's the angle of attack meter. There is a G meter somewhere on board, um, but basically, if you have bombs on board, you don't want to black out. As soon as you black out, you're definitely gone more than. Uh, you're definitely gone more than a couple of G's, and the bombs will just rip off. Let's try this again. This time, I was trying to release more of the bombs. The engine. Pull it right around. It, it, it is fairly steep. Um, and it's very hard to see the target. I think I need to have the nose. Um, you need to target what the recommends in the manual is have the target at the bottom of the nose, like as so, so as such, lined up against the uh, the crosshair in such a manner. And put it go down. Uh, hopefully the left light will go on for launch. Uh, the right light you see there is the bailout light. So as I said before, that light should turn it on. Let's see if I hit the target. It should turn it on. If it will come on, and you should bail out of, of whatever you're not bail. Sorry, you should pull out of whatever you're doing when that happens. Um, not quite sure what happened there. No bombs going off. Um, that or the bombs came off prematurely because of the IG turn and missed entirely. But I think in the first video demonstration you saw exactly how to do it and how it works. Um, there you have it. Let's check out some flares. Hold that. I think if you hold down it will check out continuous strip flares. There you go. Every two seconds. Looks very pretty. So that's um, that's pretty much it. I will probably come back at one point with another tutorial with uh, slightly more advanced techniques um, or uh, different weapons. I'll probably do one for cluster weapons and uh, probably a dive toss if I can. Um, the process involving you dive into a target and dropping bombs um, whilst pulling up, which will throw the bombs because of the kinetic energy uh, it has in a, in, a, in a dive towards target. Let's see if we can get this. Probably, uh, oops, I haven't loaded my weapon. I've gotten yet. Again, you can see there the right light going on, the right red light going on. That is the uh, pull up light. If that goes on, it recommends the no matter what you're doing, you should pull out. I, now, I'm not quite sure what criteria are it's using to uh, gauge. You should pull up. What I can only assume is it uses a, uh, a, a sort of speed altitude comparison, a rate of closure, and if it detects your rate of closure is getting to a point where you can, cannot pull out, um, then it comes on. Ah, I think that's actually the basic use of iron bombs covered. Um, we'll be back at some point in very, very soon to use some of the other weaponry, uh, custom munitions, I, I think will be up next, and any or uh, other diving techniques. So, quick recap, high, uh, high altitude dive, at least about 3k, diving about 30 degree angle thereabouts, Drop the bomb before the pull-out light and launch. Launch light is on. Um, 
And let's just do a similar one here. I'm going to strafe him around. Let's get weapons out. I have to strafe the target. Strafe, target, strafe. Pull out. Hit the chaff flare. I'm chaffing flare on the way out. Avoiding infrared missiles. Yep. So that's a similar attack run. All right. Till next lesson, folks. Take care. Uh, it's good flying.